Hi and welcome to this video on a simple Git workflow you can use for your own projects. This will allow you to version control your project so you can easily roll back changes that might be causing issues or simply to a prior stage of the development. As well as have a remote repo that will act as your backup and allow you to share and collaborate your work with others. Links can be found to my other videos in the description below to get set up with Git and GitHub if you haven't yet. In this simple workflow, we'll be working with a simple web page to which we'll be adding a CSS style sheet and making some minor modifications. You can download the starter files from the link in the description. First of all, open up the link for the starter files. From the link, you can click on the download button and then select the location to save the zip files. Once downloaded, extract the files. Open up the folder and double click the index.html to see what it looks like. It's just a page with an unordered list with some content below it. We're going to spruce it up a bit and we'll use git while doing so. To get started, we'll need to initialize git for this project. To do this, right click on the folder which was previously extracted, then select the git bash here option. Now type git in it. This will initialize this folder as a git repo and you should be able to see a hidden .git folder appear in the projects folder. If you type in git status at this point, you'll see some information displayed. The key areas are the first one, which show which branch you're on, and then shows untracked files. This is where you'll see the files that are in the project. And finally at the bottom, a hint to help you start tracking the files you want to be tracked by git. Now before we go any further, we'll have to set up the remote repo we'll be using with this project. To do this, open up a browser and navigate to your github account. Click on the drop down menu with the plus symbol and then on new repository. This will display the new repository form. First, give your repo a name, for example, learn git. Leave the rest of the settings at default and click on create repository. Now here you'll see some options as well as instructions on how to create a new git repo on your machine and add this remote repo or add this remote to an existing local repo and push it. We'll choose the second option. So copy the first line that shows you how to add a remote repo and then paste that into your git bash terminal and run it. This will add the remote git repo you just created to your local project. Type git remote and you'll see the word origin. If you go back to the page where we created the remote repo, you'll see that origin is what we've added to the local repo and it's a name for the remote repo. Now that we've added a remote repo, we can push our project files to the remote repo. But first we need something to push. As you can recall, nothing is currently tracked in our local repo. To do this, type in git add dot. Now run git status. You'll see that now we have two changes ready to be committed. This was done when we ran git add dot. The dot means add everything in the repo. Now that these changes are added, we can commit these changes. To do this, type in git commit hyphen m quotation marks first commit. Git commit is the command we use to commit all the track changes we've just added. The switch hyphen m is so we can add a message to this commit. And finally, the text in the double quotes is the message itself. Okay, it seems I haven't set my local user info, so I'll quickly run through it. If you'd like to learn more about this, there's a video in the link in the description that explains how to do this. Now, if you run this command again, you can see the number of files and the total amount of changes that have occurred. Now we'll push all our files to the remote repo. To do this, head back to the remote page, and you'll see two commands after adding the repo. The first one is to set a branch on our local repo, and the second one is to push from our local repo to our remote. Before we do this, we can use the git branch command to see what we have currently. As you can see, git has already created a branch called main when the repo was initialized. So let's proceed with pushing our project files to our remote repo. To do this, copy the command we've just seen, paste it in the terminal and run it. You'll see a series of messages detailing the process. In a nutshell, our committed changes from this local main branch was pushed to the main branch of the remote repo called origin, which is the very last line of the message. Now we can head back to our remote repo and refresh the page. You can see that the repo has been updated. We're in the main branch of our learn git repo and the two files we had in our local project are now here with the commit message test. If you go to the link with the number followed by commit and click on it, you'll be able to see that the commit that was just made with the message at the top. Now we're finally ready to start working with the web page by adding a CSS file and updating it a bit. But before we do that, we'll have to create a new branch to do this work on. To do this, type git branch dev. This will create a new branch called dev. Run git branch and you'll see the newly created branch along with our main branch. The asterisk next to the branch indicates which branch is currently the active one. Next, we'll move to the newly created branch. To do this, type git checkout dev. Now if you run git branch, you'll see that we are on the dev branch. Now we can start our work. Start by typing in code dot. 
This will open up Visual Studio Code in the current folder. Open up the HTML file so we can follow along to the changes. We'll start by linking the CSS file to the HTML document. To do this, simply uncomment the external CSS link on line number 11. On Windows, this is typically Control plus forward slash. When you refresh the page, you can now see that the content layout is in place along with some styled background elements. Now just a note, when you're working with Git, it's always good to commit a completed change. This may be one full feature or a whole unit of work which clearly has a start and finish. We'll make sure this change we made is tracked and committed. To do this, head back to the git bash shell, type git status to see the latest changes. Now type git add index.html to track these changes. If you type git status again, you'll see the file is ready to be committed. Type git commit hyphen m quotation marks linked CSS file. You'll see a message saying that the changes have been committed. Now type git status again and you'll see that we don't have any other untracked changes. Now we'll finish off the web page by adding two more changes which we'll commit as one for the sake of brevity. To do that, head back to VS Code, open the CSS file, uncomment the style decorations for the font and nav list items. Save the changes and head back to the browser and refresh the page. Now you'll see that the unordered list item is shown as a menu navigation on the right side and the text font has been updated. We'll quickly do a git status followed by adding the untracked changes and then committing it. Finally run git status once more to ensure we're in a clean working directory. Now we can quickly see all the commits we've made at the moment. To do this type git log hyphen hyphen one line. Here you'll see all the commits and messages we've done so far. This is handy when you want to see what you've done previously. This will show all the commits from last to first. The head is where we are currently in terms of the latest committed changes. Now, after the work is completed and we're happy with it, we can move to the main branch as well as push it to the remote repo. To do this, first type git checkout main. Now refresh the web page. This is the same file we were serving before. Notice that none of the changes we made is available. That's because we created a dev branch where we were working. And this allowed the main branch to be clear of all the work. Now that we're happy with the changes made, we can safely change the files in the main branch as well. To do this, type git merge dev. Remember, we always merge from the branch we want to get the changes while being in the branch we want the changes to go to. Now you'll see the changes we worked on in the current branch as well. When you refresh the web page again, you'll see the changes once more. Now we can push all the changes we made to our remote repo. To do this, type git push hyphen u origin main. You can once again see the changes being pushed to the remote repo. You can open up the GitHub repo and see the latest commit appear at the very top. And individually, you can see the latest commits on the files as well. Clicking on the commit links show all the commits with the messages we added chronologically from latest to the oldest. Well, there you have it. You successfully set up a local Git repo, added a remote repo, set up some branches, did some work in a dev branch, committed the work, and once ready, merged it to your main working area and push it all back up to your remote repo as well. There are many more ways Git can be used for not only tracking changes, but collaboration and much more. By doing this, you'll get familiar with the very rudimentary process and soon enough be more than ready to use more advanced techniques and work with others. I hope you found this useful. If so, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to help me grow. If any parts of this wasn't clear or you would have liked more information, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and goodbye.